London. Hello, you have no new messages. To send a message, press 2. You have no old message. Spell the name of the recipient. Spell the last and first name, then press hash. Now she wants the last, and then the first name, so I'm going to press 6 for N. and number entry, press hash hash. 4. Of New York. At extension 1001, press hash for search, added. To add another name, press 1. For message options, 3. Record the message, hash. Count. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, press hash. Hi Bob, this is the second message from Sarah London. Hopefully you'll get this message. Bye. Thank you. For message options, press 1. To send the message, press hash. Message sent. To send another message, press 1. To ed so that's how you send messages between phones in Cisco Unity Express. Bob has got message notification of the messages that he has been sent from Sarah's phone. Now that's within the same system. VPIM allows us to scale that with multiple systems. So now, rather than just having one Unity Express system, we now have two. So on the left-hand side, we've got Unity Express. And on the right-hand side, we have a separate Unity Express module. We could set it up that the phone on the left is able to send messages to the phone on the right in the same way as I've just demonstrated. But rather than being limited to a single system, you can make multiple systems transparently act as a single system to your users. So they think there's only one system, when in actual fact there might be multiple voice messaging systems and not just Unity Express, but Unity Express with Unity or Unity Connection or another third party voice messaging system. So basically the same process takes place. Let's assume 1000 on the left hand side dials in to its voice messaging system by pressing the messaging button on the phone, then does a lookup for a user, records a message in exactly the same way as I've just demonstrated. The message is then emailed using SMTP to the other voice messaging system. But this goes a step further because this phone's MWI will light up in exactly the same way as I demonstrated when the phones were on a single system. So not only is the voicemail sent across, but other information including the recorded name is also sent across. So when let's say Bob on the right hand side over here listens to his voicemail, he actually hears that the voicemail came from Sarah as she recorded it on her voicemail system. So once again, this helps the illusion that we have a single voice messaging system when in actual fact we have multiple voice messaging systems sending email or in this case voicemail to each other using SMTP or simple mail transfer protocol. It's also possible to send voicemail between Cisco Unity Express and Cisco Unity Connection or Unity Connection and Cisco Unity. So multiple messaging systems from multiple vendors can interoperate with each other allowing for the sending of voicemail between one system and another. Now, when I first explained this concept to engineers, a lot of them will ask the question, but why don't you just call the other party? This is often dependent on culture. In certain parts of the world, people would never want this feature because people in certain countries don't tend to use voicemail but prefer calling each other. In other countries, it's quite popular. A nice example would be where the system on the left is in one time zone, let's say in the United States, and the system on the right is in Japan. So because of the time zone differences, the user on the left might not want to make an international phone call to the user on the right just to leave a voicemail. The user in Japan may be sleeping when the United States user wants to leave a message. So rather than making an international call, knowing that the other person is not going to answer the call, the United States user just dials into their local voice messaging system, records a message, and the message is then sent to the Japanese user. Once again, 
This has several advantages because the Japanese user can retrieve the voicemail when they wake up in the same way you would do with email. If I'm working in a different time zone to you, I can send you the email knowing that you will retrieve it and read it when you have a chance. And by the same token, we're doing something similar with voicemail. Another advantage is the IP infrastructure doesn't have to be quality of service enabled. Because we are literally sending an email, or in this example a voicemail between the systems, quality of service is not required. We also don't need to make an international phone call. So there are a number of advantages to using VPIM or voicemail exchange. Just think of this in the same way as email. Don't use a voice call paradigm but use an email messaging paradigm and then this will make a lot of sense. Rather than sending an email, you're just sending a voicemail. So once again, VPIM networking allows us to network or interconnect multiple messaging systems to exchange voice messages. Examples would be Cisco Unity, Cisco Unity Connection, Cisco Unity Express and third party messaging systems. RFC 3801 provides for standards-based interoperability between messaging systems. Once again, this is not PBXs or telephone systems making calls, but messaging systems sending messages to each other in a similar way to Microsoft Exchange sending email between email servers. Messages created on one system can once again be sent to another system. This uses SMTP to transport messages over TCP IP. Simple Mail Transfer Protocol is an internet standard protocol for electronic or email transmission across an IP infrastructure. Read up about SMTP on Wikipedia or other parts of the internet. Essentially SMTP is the protocol used for exchange of email and in this example voicemail between messaging servers such as Microsoft Exchange or in our example Cisco Unity Express. The voicemail, vCard and spoken name are sent as MIME types. Now MIME or Multipurpose Internet Mail Extensions is an internet standard that extends the format of email to support, for instance, text other than ASCII, non-text attachments, multimedia. So for example, when you attach a PowerPoint presentation to an email, you're using a MIME extension. Or in this example, when we are attaching a voicemail, it's simply a MIME extension on an SMTP email sent from one messaging system to another. The spoken name can also be attached. So for example, if I record my name as David on my messaging system, you'll actually hear that recording of David as I said it on your messaging system. If the option vCard is selected, so in other words, you are allowing vCard information to be transmitted from one messaging system to another. That would contain information about the sender, such as their name, their phone number, and their email address. Non-delivery records are generated if the message is undeliverable after six hours. So in a very similar way to an email, if you send an email and it's not deliverable, you'll get a message back saying the message couldn't be delivered. VPN gateways can be configured to translate to non-VPM environments. In other words, if you've got messaging systems that support VPM and then traditional messaging systems that don't, you could set up a gateway to translate between VPM and the non-VPM environment. That concludes this first video discussing VPM networking or voice profile for internet mail. In this video, I gave you an overview of VPM and the reasons behind using VPM. I explain in brief the required steps to implement VPM. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to configure VPM between two Cisco Unity Express modules running on separate routers. Once configured, we should be able to send voicemail transparently from one system to another. Thank you for watching.